the only series of ping at golf clubs that does struggle to sell anywhere. And why, this could be very good for you. clubs, marginal gains on shafts, grips, that's not going to cut 10 shots off your handicap. Practicing, getting out, pressure practice, the rest of it, that is. Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon here, going to go and pick up some golf clubs. We've also got some golf clubs at home to open as well, which will be um, very exciting to show you because pin golf clubs throughout this whole pandemic have sold exceptionally well. We're talking like G10 drivers going for £90, even though these things are like ancient and battered. Ping G20 irons going for a premium, G30, G, 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 G. Forgiving, big. The i-series doesn't get as much love and I've actually seen a bit of a gap in the market for a lot of you that are intermediate players. We're talking 10 handicap to 20 handicap. They've got quite high club head speed. And because everyone looks at Mizuno, everyone looks at Titleist, potentially everyone looks at TaylorMade when they're looking for that player's iron, Ping I series because they're not necessarily the most good looking. They're not necessarily the most forgiving or let's say soft feeling off the face compared to the other counterparts, they kind of get left to the wayside. Therefore the i-series I do think is very undervalued and that's why not only have I got one set that I'm picking up now, another set at home, I think it's a good buy for a lot of you that are trying to get that player's club head but not really spend that kind of money. And here we are ladies and gentlemen, Ping i20 clubs. Picked everything up for £320. I spoke to a lady called Gemma, but it's actually Tom, the gentleman that was selling it. I've met Tom, I actually had a lesson with Tom, but I didn't realise it was him that was selling the clubs as he doesn't have Facebook. So Tom, thank you if you're watching this video for selling me these clubs. I'd say 320 for everything. But these irons in particular were on Facebook for over a week at £140. £140 for five clubs in really good condition, decent grips, and would probably suit a large majority of you. But because they're not the G20, the more forgiving kind, people don't necessarily look at them. And the reason they don't look at them is because these are cast iron. Your AP2, your P770, your other forged heads, your Mizunos, for example, forged heads is what intermediate players or let's say better ball strikers look for as it gives you that kind of softer feel. Ping have always produced cast iron clubs, well I'm not going to say all, have dabbled with forged faces for example like the Ping i500 but notoriously they've gone for cast iron. It's a lot cheaper method of making clubs and a lot of people would argue cast iron doesn't feel as good as forged. But if you're looking for decent performance versus price these clubs don't necessarily get looked after or sought after as much as their G20 counterparts or, for example, that forged blade or that forged muscle back that a lot of people are looking for. And I'm going to say it, I don't think there's really that much difference in terms of feel. Feel such a subjective thing. And for a lot of you guys that are just starting the game and playing off 18 and quickly coming down and you've got Aero Burner XD clubs, we're talking hybrids and you're looking for a cheap alternative just to give yourself a tiny bit more loft and a tiny bit less forgiveness, a bit more control. The i-series, i10, i20, i25, potentially ping i-blades because even they struggle. The i500 I think is the best alternative with their forged face. Not, it's not a whole forged head but the best alternative that ping have brought out recently to give you that kind of P790 feel and they're not as strong as a P790. So let's get home. I'm going to show you the i10s as well, which again, I picked up for an absolute steal. But this is something I highly recommend, guys. If you're looking for that intermediate club where not many people are looking for and you want to spend half what a set of AP2s is going to cost you or half what a set of Mizuno muscle backs are going to cost you, this is kind of more alternative with not really that much lack of performance. I think at this point, we need to clarify why I will be wearing a woolly hat until the 12th of April is mainly because of what we got going on upstairs. Definitely should have gone for another lockdown buzz cut at the start, but now we're too far gone. The end is near, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And the fact my best mate is a hairdresser and lives in the same block of flats as I do, it needs to be sorted out. 
Right, let's see these. So in this beautifully wrapped slash duct taped package, we have a set of I-10 irons. And what I want to show you guys is that Ping do very well of not necessarily going too adventurous with their newer models. Yes, over the last couple of years, they brought out newer clubs, but especially for a good eight year period, they basically just brought out the same thing over and over again. And when we get the I-10s out, which I bought for 91 pounds, including postage, which again, for a set of irons, which you'll see in a minute, is really good value, and then compare them to the I-20s, you'll see that really in terms of head design, and head design is the important thing here. Yes, these are cast, yes, these are cast, but because they're a lot more of a shallow kind of look to them, they're not gonna launch the ball as high, as well as you're not gonna get as much forgiveness from these, mainly because the center of gravity is that much closer to the face. Therefore, head design is always the most important aspect when choosing a set of irons. If it's big, it's forgiving. If it's small, it's controlling. That's pretty much the long and short of it. I've got a feeling this is gonna take me a bit of a while to get into. Don't point the scissors towards yourself, Simon. We've made that mistake far too many times. Okay, so that was genuinely painful trying to get those clubs out from underneath. I wanna give you pros and cons for both. Now, forge metal is softer. There's no question about it. And the pros are you can bend them, you can move them. They do feel on a general basis better. And when you're getting down to the lower end, I'm talking like the smaller heads, you want to feel like you got some weight behind it. And that is the whole thesis basis and everything with forged metal clubs. The cons are they're more expensive to produce, therefore they're gonna be more expensive to buy. They're also gonna be a lot more prone to getting dented, bashed up. Therefore, when you see these soft metal clubs second hand, they've got dinks, they've got chip marks, they've got stone marks out of bunkers, you name it. Therefore, they're gonna get abused more. Cast iron, especially ping cast iron clubs, are tanks. These clubs, God knows how many people have played with them. God knows how many rounds have been through these clubs. How many shanks, thins, fats, hit off a cart path, you name it. And they look, and I can guarantee you this, once I got them, get the magic sponge and everything else onto them, give them a bit of a clean, they're not gonna look too dissimilar to what they looked like when they first came out of the factory. These are built to last. So, if you're starting the game and you don't know the difference between forged and cast iron, you maybe never felt the difference between a buttery forged blade versus a cast iron blade, or well, these not cast iron, but a kind of a muscle back feel, and you're looking for a budget, I can't see why you wouldn't look past these. No, one's, no one goes down this route. Everyone has this romantic thought and process when it comes to more player clubs, I need a forged head. And if you've got the budget and you know what you want, then yes, I would agree, go down the forge route, but this is a budget version where you're not really losing that much in terms of tech and feel against its counterparts. In terms of these I-10s, 91 pounds are spent on them, which again, you've got seven clubs there, so you're just over 10 pounds a club. Grips are actually in a lot better shape than I actually first thought. They did look quite shiny, and normally when you're buying off eBay or Facebook, the first thing I do is just look at the grips and see, right, are they shiny? Are they waxy? Because that's potentially going to cost you £80. Probably the same amount just to get them re-gripped, which is just as important. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the only thing connecting you and the club. Therefore, they are important to be in good condition. Overall, very happy with this purchase. I bought this set of irons, not really to kind of make any money on, because there's not going to be much there for it. As I say, the whole title of this video is that they don't really sell for a lot but they're undervalued and I wanted to get them. It just so happened I got a set of these as well to obviously compare. So let's look at a price comparison between the G models of both of these set of, of irons compared to the I models, which again, aren't gonna be that sought after and a lot more people will go look at different alternatives. And this is kind of the whole thesis and basis of this channel is that there's no right or wrong answer. I'm not saying go and get forged. I'm not saying go and get cast iron, but I'm just saying, let's value the price that you can get a set for versus the performance loss or gains. 
bearing in mind, none of us, if you're watching this channel, probably you're not gonna be a plus three handicapper. If you're watching this channel and your handicap's between eight and 28, this is the kind of level that we're at that marginal gains, year on year on clubs, marginal gains on shafts, grips, that's not gonna cut 10 shots off your handicap. Practicing, getting out, pressure practice, the rest of it, that is. I feel like I'm going on a bit of a rant. Let's have a look, ping I-10. So for example, someone's already, and obviously this is looks like a professional seller, 1799 for a set of ping I-10s. Be very interesting, potentially June, July, and I might be making a video on this. Price predictions, I think everything's gonna definitely be going up. Price predictions, prices wise, I don't think he's gonna get that anytime soon. Maybe in June, July is. Four to sand wedge, 210 pounds. Hello, I might have actually made a bit of money here. But you can see there's a lot of sets here. 105 pounds, 60 pounds, there's an odd 180, it varies. Depending on what time of day and the pictures and the focus of these. But overall, a full set of Ping I-10s, you can definitely get for 100 pounds. Ping G10 irons. Same set. See, that's got five days left, five to sand wedge. One inch longer, so that's not even someone's probably set makeup that's quite niche and that's already got bids at 102 with five days left 189.99 and that's with one of the bits out of the back taken out as well 142 147 109 189 159 this is all in the last couple of weeks 80 pounds, that's not too bad, that's a good value, 150 pounds. So there's almost a 50 pounds difference. I think if you were to take the averages out and have a G series and an I series, you're looking probably about 30% markup. And I understand why cast iron is built and beautiful for a big forgiving head. You're not looking for that feel, you're looking for something that's just basically just gonna hit it somewhere that way. Again, for reasons that I've explained, I do feel there is an argument that if you want to save yourself 40% on a set of irons and you're new to this game and you've got a high club of speed, I-series irons aren't a bad route to go. Ping G20, let's see where we are. 60 pitch and wedge, 169. It'd be interesting the price difference between the two of these actually. That's five to seven plus nine, 149, 299 someone's trying to get out. Let's have a look at sold prices as that gives us a definite better look. 198. 155, 175, 210, so again, 230, 180, 259, well, well done sir, Golf Shack UK, got 259 pounds for those, he's made an incredible markup on those, I doubt he's paid 100 pounds for those set of irons, whereas those I, okay, there's only five of them, so that does make it a bit different. It's only six to pitch and wedge, but for the set of irons that was on Facebook, those set of irons were on Facebook for 140 for over a week on Facebook. 229, so automatically 169, buy it now price for pretty much the same set of irons. 169, this is golf clubs for cash, 169, and that's pretty much a full set there. Let's have a look again, sold listings. I think you guys are pretty much getting my point and the whole reason that I bought the i10s in the first place is kind of highlighting and if you're watching my channel, I kind of want you to look past the brand and look past the marketing and everything else. Does it serve a purpose? Does it serve the purpose that you want? 137, full set of clubs here, four to wedge. Doesn't look great for my investment of 120 pounds for five of them, does it? Again, it's a no-brainer. If you're on a budget, and as I said, you are you meet the criteria of having that more controlled head and you don't want to spend 300 pounds on AP2s, you don't want to spend 400 pounds on P770s, and you want an interim set that's not gonna break the bank, I-Series are definitely underrated, undervalued, in the second hand club market when everything's just stupidly expensive. So guys, there you have it. There's my stupid haircut. There's the purchases that I made over the last couple of days. I've got some good videos coming up. I'm starting to get into a bit of a rhythm. Obviously it's difficult with both kids at the moment um, and working 17 jobs at the moment to keep everything going. But I have got some good videos coming up. And as I say, I really appreciate all the support, feedback, everything that you're giving towards the channel, especially over the last year, it's been incredible. 
Guys, leave this video a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. Catch you guys there.